What's up everyone, it's Kelly and today I've got another stamping video for you. So today I am actually trying out another Amazon nail polish stamping kit. I did one of these a while back, I'll link it up in the cards, but I was surprised and very impressed at how well an Amazon brand of stamping plate worked for me and I wanted to try another brand. So that's what we're doing today. Today I'm actually trying stamping plates from a brand called Born Pretty Store, which is actually a very popular brand for stamping products and also just for nail art products in general. But before we get into that, if you're unfamiliar with stamping, I do actually have a nail polish 101 video, which is everything that you need to know about stamping for beginners. And I do have a playlist of a bunch of different stamping videos, but basically the essence of it is that you get a metal etched stamping plate and you can use that to transfer designs onto your nail. And they're usually pretty intricate. So it's a cool way of getting very detailed nail art without having to have any freehand skill. So yeah, I went on Amazon. I found this set of Born Pretty stamping plates. It comes with eight different plates. The listing that I found these on actually had a few different variations, but this is the 19377 set, which I picked just because I liked the designs on it the most. And we really do have a nice variety. We've got a plate that has a lot of floral and lace inspired designs. We have this more nature inspired one. We've got a lot of leaf patterns and spider webs, flowers, and stuff like that. We have this really interesting stippled plate, which has a lot of dotted designs on it. There's one with very classic sort of, I don't know, these remind me of like early 2000s vibes. X's and O's and little stars and mustaches and lips and barcodes and stuff like that. We have this plaid stamping plate, which is probably the one I was the most excited about because I think that plaid nail art is very easy when you have a stamping plate for it. And I think it just makes it look really cool. There's another nature-y inspired one. We've got trees and leaves and flowers, stuff like that. We have one with more geometric inspired designs and they're not full nail designs. They're just kind of little details that you can add on. And then we have this more winter slash holiday kind of vibe. We've got some Fair Isle print and sweaters, reindeer, snowflakes, that kind of thing. So there's really a lot of designs on these plates. But one of the things that really drew me to them is that these do actually have the plastic backing on the plate. So one thing I found with some Amazon stamping brands is they just give you the metal plate without a backing, which means that the edges are very sharp and it also is prone to scratch whatever surface you're doing your nail art on. So I always appreciate having these plastic backings. They're usually acetone resistant, so you can make a mess of them and you can just clean it up when you're done. But it really is just nice for ease of holding onto them and ease of moving them around without scratching stuff up. So I'm going to go ahead and test these plates. We'll just try to do a bunch of different designs. One quick thing to note is that this set of stamping plates does not come with a stamper or scraper. So if you don't already have one, you will need to purchase one separately. I'm going to link one down below that I recommend also on Amazon, but that is something that you will need in order to use these designs unless you already have a stamping set at home. So yeah, let's just dive in. I'll show you a bunch of designs. We can test out these plates, see how well etched they are, and see if they're worth buying. So let's go ahead and roll that footage. So for my stamping experimenting, what I really want to check is how well the plates are etched. So I want to experiment with some thicker lines and thinner lines just to see how those get picked up by the stamper and the stamping polish. So I'm going to start with this kind of medium one, and I stamped that onto my nail, and you can see that for the most part, it really did pull the whole design onto my nail. There are a couple of areas that are just a little bit spotty, but it's really not noticeable unless you're looking super closely. And I think there's also some level of user error just because I'm working with a camera, so I have to keep on switching the focus and it takes a little bit of extra time, which could cause the nail polish to dry a little bit. But for my first use of my first plate, I thought this actually looked pretty good. So for the next design, I decided to try using a thinner design because I think that those can be a little bit trickier when you're picking them up. So I found this little hexagon design that has really, really thin lines and I'm going in with my stamper. And the first time I tried it, I noticed that it didn't pick up a whole area of the design. So I decided to not put that one on my nails. I decided to try again. And I do think, again, I might have been working a little bit slow. So I tried to work quicker the second time around. And that time it did pull the full design onto the stamper and I thought it looked pretty good. By the way, 
I am using a little cool trick here, which is to use scotch tape to peel off any extra bits of nail polish on my skin, which is really nice when you're cleaning up stamping because sometimes if you're just using a cleanup brush or a Q-tip, it can flood your cuticles a little bit. So I always like to do that first just to kind of clean up the area. But yeah, for thinner designs, I was pretty impressed with how this looked. So now let's move on to another design technique. What I wanted to try was double stamping. And I don't know that this necessarily tests the quality of stamping plates, but I just feel like it's part of my experimenting to just try different techniques and make sure that they all work with the stamper that I'm using. But I also think it was a good way to test and make sure that even though the stamp is nicely etched into the plate, it's easy enough to clean. So what I like to do in between layers is I use pure acetone on a Q-tip or a cotton ball and I clean off the plate that way. And I did notice that going in with my second layer, it was nicely clean. So I was able to get those very crisp, clean lines with my second layer of snowflakes. And originally I was gonna do it like a double stamp where it almost looked like it had a shadow. It was just slightly offset. But once I had the white snowflakes on the stamper, I thought it would be cuter to just go in with a bunch of snowflakes and just have kind of like a, a flurry of them in layers on my nail and not have them offset. And I think that actually ended up looking really cute. So I'm glad I went with that. But yeah, this experimenting was good because I feel like it was easy to see that cleaning the plate was possible, very simple to do, and you're still able to get nice crisp lines. Although I do kind of wish that I had a little snowflake in the top left corner there, but that wasn't the plate not picking up. That was just me not placing it in the exact perfect spot. So now moving on to another technique. This one is reverse stamping, which a lot of people also refer to as advanced stamping. Basically what you do is you pick your design, you put your polish on it, you scrape it off, you apply the stamper over it, and then you actually leave the design on the stamper and you go in with nail polish and you kind of color in the design on there. And this was another thicker design. It was a full nail design that had thicker and thinner lines. And I think they all actually turned out really nicely. So I was very impressed with the way that that looked, but I went in and I decided to fill in some areas. What I was really looking to do was not do a full decal, but I almost wanted it to look like you could see some parts of the base color through the design. So I filled in some areas. It kind of looked like a mix between lace and maybe like a stained glass kind of design. So that's what I was going for here. It just filled in that area. And then I let it dry on the stamper for a little while, maybe like five, 10 minutes. And then I went in with the Orly Bonder base coat, which has a nice stickiness to it. So you can actually apply a dry stamp over the Orly Bonder base and it will stick onto your nail. So I did do that. And then I just pushed in to my cuticles, the edge of the stamp so that I could kind of cut it and peel off those areas. And then I went in with my cleanup brush and I was really pleased with the result of this one. I think it shows me how this stamping plate was etched in really nicely. I could see the thick lines, I could see the thin lines and there's a nice distinct chin between them. So it ended up working really well for this type of design. And it's always nice to know that I can do some reverse stamping with a stamping plate. Although I think you could probably do that with any working stamping plate, but it was still fun to play around with. I decided to go back to another simple technique, just regular one-time stamping, because what I really wanted to do was focus on a stamp that had a very thick filled in area. So I saw these little lips and I wanted to see how well they stamped onto my nail because sometimes when you have big areas that are filled in with the stamping plate, you can get little spots. And I did notice that to an extent with these, but I think it was very minor. And again, some of that can be chalked up to user error, but I think when you are working with super tiny spots like this, it's pretty easy to just fill in with a little detail brush or you can almost leave it. And I don't think people would notice unless they're looking super close up at your nail. So I was pretty impressed with how this looked as well. Now, this next experiment, I wanted to play around with doing a stamping gradient on my nails. And this was my only fail of this video. I saw this little dotted cure design and I thought it would be fun to use two polishes to stamp on. But I noticed when I stamped it that the stamper did not look good. It did not look like circles. It looked like weird little leopard spots. And I ended up trying it a bunch of times and I just could not get it. For some reason, this place plate in particular did give me a little bit of trouble. The dots were not as easy to pick up as anything else. 
else, but I was able to do it when I just used one polish and worked really quickly. And last but not least, I decided to do another double stamping design. Well, actually I decided to do one stamp, but you'll see why I ended up doing a double stamp for this one. But I wanted to go in with another very thick design because I wanted to see how well that picked up. And this one was actually incredibly impressive. I did this little plaid design and I actually didn't get any spots at all. The only part that was spotty was a little white spot in the center because I did not clean my stamper off well enough. So I decided to actually go in and double stamp it with another design on top of it just to cover up that little mistake that I made. And I ended up thinking this was really cute. I kind of like that juxtaposition of the very delicate metallic flower against this strong red and black plaid design. But I do love a plaid design. I think they're so frustrating to do freehand. So it's really cool to have that stamping plate where I'm able to just create this very intricate design without having to freehand it myself. But yeah, overall, I was actually really impressed with these. I would say the overwhelming majority of the plates worked really nicely for me. The only one that gave me trouble was the one with all of the dotted designs. And I think that's just because those dots were so super tiny. I was working fairly slow because I was trying to use multiple colors at the same time. But overall, I thought it was really great. So let's talk about that a little bit more. So yeah, that is it for testing out these Born Pretty store Amazon stamping plates. And I have to say, I do think that they are worth the purchase just because you get so many different designs. They're etched in pretty well. They pick up really nicely. I do think that a lot of it has to do with using the correct nail polish for it. I do also actually have a video where I tested stamping polishes against regular nail polishes. So if you wanna check that out, it had pretty surprising results. So I'll link that up in the cards. But yeah, I do think as long as you're just using the right tools for this, you can get a really great manicure out of these. And there's just a nice variety of designs. I always like buying sets of stamping plates instead of just buying one at a time because it gives me the opportunity to try designs that I maybe wouldn't have reached for or picked out myself, but it kind of forces you to be a little bit more creative, which I think is very fun. So like I said, I got this set off of Amazon and the eight plates retail for $12.99 USD, which makes them a little bit over a dollar and a half per stamping plate, which I think is actually a pretty great deal. So I'm gonna link that down below. Like I said, I'm also going to link a stamper and a scraper, and I'm also gonna have all of the products that I used in today's video down in the description as well. So you can check that out if you're interested, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What do you think of this stamping plate set? Which plate is your favorite? And are you planning on picking it up or do you already own it? Leave it in the comments, we can chat about it. And if you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon, my Royal Astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my Cosmic Admirals, Paula, Ken, Rosie, and Angel. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter, Juliet. And Juliet wants to know, would you rather sing to an audience for five minutes or dance for five minutes? Which is a tough question because let me tell you, I am not a good singer and I am not a good dancer. But if I had to choose, I would choose to dance in front of an audience for five minutes because I do not like the sound of my voice. I don't like the sound of my singing voice. I have absolutely no talent in that at all. I don't think I have any talent in dancing, but do like workouts that sometimes look like dances. So I feel like I could do that. And also I feel like it's easier to jokingly dance than it is to jokingly sing. I think even when you're singing poorly, people tend to think that you're trying your best. And I feel like it would be less embarrassing for me to dance because at least I could be like, haha, I'm just joking around, doing the Q-tip. You know what I mean? Honestly, an introvert's nightmare, but yeah, I, I'll dance for five minutes. That's fine. <laughs> but let me know what you would prefer to do in the comments. I wonder if I have any actually good singers or dancers in my community. Let me know. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.